Oh. So FTX Outback long-term review. We've had it for five months and we're going to cover a few things that we've done. Yep, we did some stuff that works and some stuff that didn't. So to start with, body shells. Now in our first review, I said I wasn't keen on the shell. It's because the standard one I think looks a bit tacky. It's really glossy, which you always get of a Lexan shell and had like these plastic window stickers and I wasn't really keen on it. So this shell I've done since, it is the stock shell which I've repainted on the outside. Um, I just did it because I wanted to shorten the Jeep. I didn't do it because I like the shell. It's because we tried running it longer with a different body shell and the bumpers would get hung up on everything. Hey. Yeah. He's up. I did something successfully. Toughness wise though, if you take the mirrors off, they will last for a while. If you leave the mirrors on, as soon as you roll, they punch through and you get big cracks in the body shell that are currently glued up. And as soon as it's cracked, just keep spreading and you get through the shells. So don't put tat on the shell. Anytime you drill a hole into it or anything like that, you're weakening it. Really bad that but is. But look, that's where the snorkel and mirrors go. It's stupid. Yeah. Don't use snorkel and mirrors. So that's the shell out of the way. Other than that, what have we done? We got we tried adding extra weight. We Good. tried adding extra weight as stock, but whenever you try adding extra weight, it's invariably higher up, and then that makes it want to tip over more. So that didn't work particularly well, but adding weight in the correct way, like heavy wheels, we got these metal bead locks, and inside there, between the wheel and the foam, there's a ring of sticky weights. So they had a lot of weight and it's at the lowest point. They help press the tires into the ground with the treads and they keep it from rolling over because the weight's down there and not up here. Steering servo was a little bit lame. So went in with the 20 kilo waterproof servo there and it needs to be waterproof. It's the first thing it gets dunked. But again, I wouldn't call that an essential upgrade. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. Same with the, same with the ESC. We've, we've gone to a 1060 here simply because I had it and it had a connector on. When I got this off pull, the connector went. Neither of us know who chopped it off. I think we were both like abducted by aliens or something. But again, nothing wrong with the ESC it comes with at all. Receiver, radio gear, had no problems with. Um, moving backwards. The actual chassis, shock absorbers had no problems with. Nothing's broken. The only breakage you've ever had on this was the gears in there. But they're all plastic as stock. You start to upgrade things, you get stuck, Oops. something's gonna give, and it was that. But if you look back in our other videos, for 12 pound, you can get full metal gears for in there. They're for an RGT, which is the same Jeep, so you can find that. Um, motor, stock one's 20 turn. It's a bit snappy. 20 turn back in the day would have been a, a mod for a fast car. Um, and what you want, you wanna be able to come up to an obstacle and, and really slowly go over it like that. And with the 20 turn motor, you wouldn't. It's wheel spin, wheel spin, you'd hop around it, it'd fall over. Again, cheap, uh, 15, 16 pound for that, it's 35 turn. Just gives you that, you can just go slower with it, which for me took a while to get my head around, but it's what you want. What else have we done? Battery tray. Battery tray, I've moved it forward a bit. The best thing you can do which a lot of people do is put all of that back there and put the battery sort of across ways. But because I started with the narrow shell when I tried the limo, it wasn't something I could do. And I've not found it affects any performance since, so I'm happy with it being moved a bit forward. There was a lot of twist in this. You can see now the chassis's got a bit of twist, but round here it's ridiculous. <laughs> as much as so it these um, camber links from a, just a, an old touring car thing, I just put as a strut brace, so it's really stiffened up the towers and now the only flex is in this middle bit of the chassis, which is a lot better. Because what you find now when you watch it, you see the suspension actually working. Whereas before, suspension could stay still and the whole thing was just twisting about all over the place. So, Of course, one of the weird things with this, it comes with four link suspension front and rear. Mm. And they also put a panard bar on the front. Which, which we've removed and the mount for. Which you only really need for a three link setup. Mm. So it doesn't need that extra thing and it was hindering the actual suspension articulation as well. So. Yeah, because with this, it's mounted there and there, it can't move sideways. The idea of a panard bar in a real car 
is you've got a three link set up and as it goes up and down if you don't have a bar you see it connected there went up to there the mount's gone the axle moves sideways like that you don't need it on this at all it just bound things up talking of axles we've got cvds there now this is standard comes with a dog bones just a drive shaft goes into a cup they can bind up and it's got a really thin machined bit in the front drive shaft that can snap so you upgrade to these at double the price but it's all you'll ever need and double the price from seven quid you know you're talking like 14 quid it's peanuts they're metal that's cosmetic don't need doing inside here we've got um alloy diff blocks but again i actually saw that the, the ones it comes with have got an alloy insert they hadn't failed on us it's just preventative so that's about it really i wouldn't say i'd say all you need to do to these all you absolutely have to do is those gears because that's all that's ever broken the rest of it improves it but it's not been problematic and the only weak point really with this whole thing is this turning circle the steering lock the turning four. circle is quite junk i don't think it's got the ride height to get up this step well, I'd be most disappointed if it didn't get up there. The turning circle's a bit poor. Turning circle is very ocean liner-ish. Man, okay. You need to have, like, butterfly wing fingertip control on the throttle. Oh, and as standard, quite a few of them seem to be wired up, so they go full speed in reverse and 60% forward, yeah. so you need to be checking that. All you got to do, swap your wires around, reverse your controller, but that's like, we didn't realise for ages until I got hold of it and was like, no, this is weird. Um, but yeah, they're pretty capable. It seems to keep up. It's been out with TRX4s. It's been out with 6x6 things. It's never once looked shabby. It's been shabby. Fully, fully submerged. Fully, <laughs> fully submerged. Like, it's had all of the submerging. Um, yeah, no, it seems pretty good. Definitely recommend them for the price. If you look up the parts for an RGT crawler, um, you get them off, like, Alibaba or whatever. If you can be bothered to wait for the delivery it's worth it what else we done it's got a metal bumper now again i went to that because it just gives me a better approach angle than the standard one and i like cool. the look of it better it's actually got somewhere to attach a tow bit to yay whereas the standard ones had a plastic bit across there it's never going to be that strong that's probably assisted with strengthening the yeah, it has, because it's joined up the sides of the chassis. That's just a generic. So much stuff just fits one-tenth crawlers. Tyres, don't know what these are. Got given them. They're pretty good. Seem to work. But yeah, if you look back, you obviously see a lot of footage from this in our other videos, and it just just does all right. So for the money, I think this probably owes, I don't know, mid-200s. But for, for what it is, can't go wrong, really. It's a good laugh, so let's go get it muddy. You, oh, go, yeah. you go down the middle, you're out of reach. <laughs> That's quite deep. I think I should get a quick yeah. picture of that. That's like a proper tricky little thing to get on. It really didn't look it on video, but it is. That is grim, that puddle down there. Can we get this on video? We come along the grass, look, and then we drop off an edge, but the edge is at a funny angle, and then it's narrow, and yeah. And you've got, it's a knife edge as well, so either way you've got it's difficult anyway now for me i'm going to go right over to that side so i'm coming down this slope oh there's a there's chase a, the bug thing there's a bug thing i'm not following you i'm waiting I'm just getting there so you need to come down this way yeah i never had a proper crack at this last time When you're down it, you got to get over that pit. Ooh. I don't want to have to walk and get it from down there. I'm down, done it. Awesome. Right, here's the how not to. Right, here's Mike's attempt. That stick is irritating, Lee. <laughs> it's a bit. Yeah. Really rely on those brakes as well. Oh! Right, so now Mike's having a go. Another go. 
You didn't need to say that. <laughs> to the power of video, this is Mike's first go. Fury. That's going in the review right there. Outback that is Fury. going in the review. Does it walks the walk? Oh, it sounds horrible. That see, it sounds crunchy though, doesn't it? Yeah. Like gears. No, that is though. Yeah, that is gears. That's a big spur, isn't it? Going. Should we put the cane on? Yeah, I think so. Sounds bad. <laughs> now. Yep. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, in summary, I'd say these are definitely a good buy. We've randomly had a failure today, which is nothing to do with it being an FTX Outback Fury. This garbage, possibly fakely branded RC four-wheel drive motor has gone and do it. Look at that, the end of it. The, the bearing's totally toasted. It's only three runs old and this gets washed, blown out and oiled every time after the runs. There's no reason. So it's gone all loose. The whole insides are wobbling about and it shredded the spur gear. But that's nothing to do with that's nothing to do with the car. It's just a crappy motor. So if you've seen my previous link to these motors, ignore it. Don't bother. Sorry, I'm not giving you a refund but I'm not trying to sell them. But yeah, poo. But other than that, good. But listen, <laughs> garbage. Nice low centre of gravity working well. There's a turd floating in there, look. I'm sure it's not, I'm sure it's a log, but it's brown and floating. I don't, I don't want to touch it. 